when we were in the clinic, I was like Googling up all the symptoms and I'm like, no, I don't have all the symptoms. This must be a mistake. It was the most harrowing and the most life-changing event of my entire life. Hi, it's Jamie. It's October and it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. That's why we're here. And that is why I have a very special guest with me today. Her name is Lei Ting. Hi, Lei Ting. Thanks for joining us. Hi, Jamie. Hi, everyone. I'm Lei Ting and I'm 27 now. So I finished my chemotherapy, surgery, and my radiation therapy. And I'm currently now on hormonal therapy. It's been two years since I was diagnosed with my breast cancer in September 2021. So obviously today we're going to talk about breast cancer. Let's give out some stats first. Breast cancer is the most commonly occurring cancer among women in Singapore. Each year, over 2,000 women are diagnosed with it and over 400 women die from it. I know it's very grim, but there is some good news. If detected early, there is a survival rate of 99%, a five-year survival rate of 99%, which is good news, right? And it's definitely... Breast cancer is a subject that affects lives of many people. And people often think that like, I'm young, I will not get breast cancer. But I think cancer really does not discriminate. And I mean, personally, this is a very meaningful interview um, today. You know, I'm, I'm so glad to be speaking to you. I've never shared this before. I mean, I've shared it with friends, obviously, but I've never shared it like in front of the camera before. But I myself had breast cancer two years ago. And I would have to say um, it was the most harrowing and the most life-changing event of my entire life. Even now talking about it, um, I feel a bit apprehensive and emotional, and I'm really glad to have you with me, you know, a fellow breast cancer survivor. I'm glad that we can both be here to talk about it. And like you said, breast cancer does not discriminate. So our main focus is on early breast cancer or EBC and some facts about it is that it is a cancer found only the breast or the nearby lymph nodes. The most common type of breast cancer is hormone receptor positive HER2 negative type and that affects 70% of all breast cancer cases. You were diagnosed when you were only 25. How was that like? It was really quite scary because actually what happened was I noticed a lump when I was pregnant and actually the lump was growing bigger over time as I was like throughout my pregnancy. But actually I was lactating then, so I probably thought like it's a clot milk duct or engorgement in breast. So I followed my instincts and when I was week 38 pregnant, I decided to ask my gynecologist on his opinion. So he immediately sent me for an ultrasound scan and subsequently I was arranged to meet a breast surgeon because the ultrasound scan of course did not look good. And I had to induce the neighbor labor next, the next day. So <laughs> After giving birth, I did my biopsy yeah. where it's confirmed it's a um, hormone receptive and HER2 negative uh, cancer. So actually, up till biopsy, I was in denial. When we were in the clinic, I was like googling up all the symptoms and I'm like, no, I don't have all the symptoms, this must be a mistake. And even the ultrasound scan, it wasn't conclusive as to whether it's cancerous or not. So I was like, nah, it's gonna be a mistake. But really, biopsy confirmed the cancer and we just have to take it and see this. Uh. And actually now, after completing my eight months of treatment, my biggest fear now is relapse. Yeah. That is all, that's our greatest fear, all of us, right? I mean, the way you're talking about it right now, I have to say you've, you're very brave because, you know, you're talking about it like it was just, oh, you know, it happened and I'm over it. And, and now I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm living life, et cetera, et cetera. But having been there, I can only imagine the fear that grips your heart. You know, like you, um, I mean, I found a lump, mine was smaller, um, but I also went for an ultrasound and my ultrasound and my, my biopsy actually came up inconclusive. The MRI also, and it actually only took surgery to, for me to find out that it was cancerous. Um, but there was, you know, that's, there's always that period of time when you're waiting for results and you just think the worst because like you said, you Google it. And I would have to say that is like the worst thing to do when you, you have something like that because the internet will throw up a lot of horror stories and it will just make you feel so stressed. I remember that, that the whole weekend before I went in for my MRI scans, I just, I couldn't eat. I think I had like one apple like over the three days or something like that. Um, but having said that, when, when the doctors found out that it was cancer, it was all, it all happened very quick, you know? It, it was taken out and then they they did uh, the histology and they, they said that um, they gave me the good news that I didn't need chemo. 
which, you know, that was like such good news. In fact, to this very day, I, I, I think I haven't shared about uh, the fact that I had breast cancer because I'm almost ashamed because I feel like I'm not a true survivor if I didn't have to go through chemotherapy. Because, you know, I know that having chemo is the worst, is, is quite bad. I've, I've had friends who have gone through it. And I'm, I'm almost ashamed to call myself a survivor because I don't know how I would have gone through chemotherapy because I only did the radiation therapy. So I have to say, at 25, you had to go through all that. You are one brave woman, hey, Tang, You really are, Tang. Yeah. Now, we've all heard this before, but we're living proof of it. Early detection plays a critical role in the fight against breast cancer. Can you tell us some of the, the methods for detection? So actually, like all women should do their monthly breast self-examination. So actually, by doing the monthly self-examination, you can familiarize with the textures and shapes of your breast. So if you notice any lump, swelling, or any skin changes, you must consult the doctor immediately for their opinion. And another tool that we can use for screening for breast cancer is actually mammogram. So actually, mammogram is an X-ray of the breast, and they can help to detect early breast cancer even before symptoms are present. So actually, for mammogram, although it's recommended for women age 40 and above, if you are, let's say, in your 20s and 30s, and you're not sure whether um, there's any issue with your breast, I think it is good to consult your healthcare professional immediately. And if mammogram is a suitable screening, they'll definitely recommend it to you. And don't be afraid of the pain. I, I didn't find it painful. Uh, what about yourself? I do find mammogram very painful. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh oops. Yeah. <laughs> but for that pain and for that ease of assurance that like nothing is wrong with my breast, I think it's a worthy pain, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> no pain, no gain. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> And actually for women like uh, 20s and 30s, actually why mammogram is not suggested is because we have denser breasts. Mm -hmm. So actually mammogram, even exposing to all the radioactive substances, or it doesn't really show any unusual um, lumps in our breasts, which is why mammogram is only recommended for women age 40 and above. Yeah, Like what you mentioned earlier, I think um, self-examination really is key here because it's something you can do on your own every day, you know, just or every week or whatever. Yeah, you know, just get acquainted with, you know, your body and check for lumps. I mean, for the both of us, we found out about it via a self-examination. So that's, you know, we, we're here to say that's very important. Thanks for highlighting the importance of self-checkups and also mammograms. If breast cancer is detected early, what are the chances of a successful treatment? Actually, when breast cancer is detected early, the chances of successful treatment actually significantly increases. And in fact, early breast cancer has a high cure rate. And by detecting it early, you actually have a higher chance of surviving. So actually for me, uh, I undergo my chemotherapy first because actually my lung was quite big in nature, about 5 cm. And actually I wanted to have kids in the future. So actually the doctor wanted to conserve my breast and opt for a lumpectomy. And thankfully, the chemotherapy worked to shrink my lung away and I managed to opt for a lumpectomy to conserve my breast. And subsequently, of course, I went for radiation therapy. And because mine is hormone receptive, so I had to go through hormone therapy as well. Yeah. And look at you, you're glowing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So you've mentioned the traditional treatments like chemotherapy and radiation and lumpectomy. Um, there are some newer treatments available as well, aren't there? And actually, there are newer treatments available, such as targeted therapy. Targeted therapy are treatments that target specific proteins that control how cancer cells grow, divide and spread. And actually, similar to chemotherapy, the goal of targeted therapy is to prevent and lower the risk of recurrence of breast cancer as well. Thank you for sharing your knowledge and your personal experience about it. Um, like I mentioned earlier, mine was uh, also a less, uh, less aggressive sort of tumour and um, I was very blessed that I didn't need chemo. Uh, like you said before, you know, technology is so advanced. Um, they sent the tumor to some lab in the States and got it analyzed. And when it came back, my oncologist was like, your, your tumor is a very well behaved one. Um, what you need is uh, radiation. And even then he wasn't very rushed to put me under radiation therapy. Um, he said, you know, when you've recovered from your surgery, just go for radiation and then go on um, some hormone therapy and that would be it. And I was like, are you sure that's all I need? Uh, he's like, yeah, 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 you know, don't worry. So 
I would have to say that I feel very, very blessed that that was my outcome. It is important to note here that even with early detection and successful treatments, a small number of patients, about 20 to 30 percent, are still considered high risk and they could still develop incurable metastatic breast cancer. And in terms of what makes you high risk, if your tumor was 5 cm and above, if cancer was found in multiple lymph nodes, or if your tumor is high grade. In anything, just consult your oncologist and they would be the best person to tell you what treatment's best for you. Every breast cancer survivor has one thing on her mind every day. I would say all day, every day, and that is relapse. Do you fear that? Definitely. It will be a lie if I say that I do not fear the relapse. And many people may think that like for us survivors, we just finish our treatment and we'll be fine. But the fact is that deep down within us, we have this fear of relapse. But I think really what helps me not to think about this relapse is my family. Knowing that I finished my treatment and I'm surviving well, I decided to spend my days more meaningfully and happily in my family and instead of dwelling on the negative. And I think for me like, my doctors, my oncologists, my gynecologists and my breast surgeons are doing their best to prevent a recurrence and also monitoring my health very closely. So as a good patient, <laughs> I think the least I could do is really to trust their expertise and experience and live my life well and strong. I second that. I think it's almost, I'm almost grateful that I have this fear of a relapse because it reminds me every single day to live my life to the fullest. There is no absolute way to predict when cancer comes back or not, but there are a few things to do to reduce the risks of recurrence. Uh, we all know this, exercise, well-balanced diet, you know, like taking lots of omega-3s, that sort of thing. No smoking and drinking, unfortunately, and regular screenings. All those factors can reduce the risks of it coming back. Definitely. And actually, earlier mentioned, there's a targeted therapy which helps to prevent occurrence. In Singapore, there is a newly approved standard of care treatment for the reduction of the risk of recurrence of breast cancer. And I think like personally for me, what's helping me to prevent my relapse is actually the fact that I wanted to give hope to the survivors and the people that are struggling through the journey. And actually opening up about my cancer has been really a healing journey of mine because I understand more of my emotions, my fears, and it really helps me to eliminate all these negative emotions and bring out the positivity. And of course, in order to give hope to people, I have to live a life full of positivity and happiness. And so I'm doing everything in my ability to do so and prevent a relapse. We hope that this conversation that we've had has helped raise awareness and has empowered you. Remember that early detection can save lives and we're here as living proof. And we really hope that you will make that appointment to get yourself checked. It is October. Breast Cancer Awareness Month, if you're due for a screening, make that appointment ASAP upon watching this. Like right after you, you get off your iPad or phone, make your appointment, call your doctor. And thank you everybody for watching this and thank you guys for having me. So let's spread the words and let's save lives. And remember, her fight is our fight. Let's give her hope. hope.